All right. Um, can you speak? I'm... Ah, ah, ah. Live にしますね今。Okay. All right. Please go ahead. Okay, so today we have our speaker, uh, Dr. Horikawa from NTT. So he used to work at ATR Japan uh, and he has published many wonderful work using uh, decoding techniques, including decoding of dreams with Dr. Kamitani. And he moved to NTT uh, last year and uh, we are excited to hear his uh, presentation on his recent eye science paper on your Robert's presentation of visually evoked emotional experiences. So when you're ready, please start. Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy to have an opportunity for talking my this emotional study here. And uh, hi, uh, I'm Tomoya Sorika, uh, working in NTT. We're excited to hear his... Uh, hmm. Okay. Sorry, that's and, uh, fine, yeah, should be uh, okay. Maybe hurry, okay. Yeah. So today's topic is about this uh, my emotional study conducted in my previous laboratory in, in ATL, uh, which is published almost about two years ago. And uh, I'm not sure whether I can go in, uh, I can go all the details of all the analysis in this study, but I think uh, we can go, uh, we can do this talk with um, uh, inter in uh, interactive manner. So if you have any questions, please interrupt me uh, whenever you want, if any. And uh, so, okay, let's start. And uh, first of all, uh, so, yeah, the study. So this study was a uh, collaborative work with uh, Alan Cohen, Nakagiri Tona, and Yuki Kamitani. And uh, our investigation is was largely inspired by the psychological study uh, conducted by Cohen and Kertona. And the uh, main objective of this research was to find the neural basis of a uh, new emerging theory of emotion proposed by Cohen and Kertona, which is called a uh, high dimensional emotion space theory. And uh, uh, we used fMRI imaging and machine learning based uh, the driven analysis on those fMRI responses to find some supporting evidence of that of that uh, high dimensional emotion space theory. And uh, so before going into the detail of our uh, study in this paper, uh, I'd like to first begin by uh, introducing some background of the original psychological study and then uh, go in detail in the in our study. Okay. Well, so in conventional psychological study, uh, also there are a large amount of large number of variants of emotional theories. Uh, emotional experiences have often been characterized by uh, or based on relatively smaller number of emotion categories or affective dimensions. In particular, uh, researchers mainly focused on two representative theories of emotion, theories or model, models of emotion. The one is the basic emotion theory. The basic emotion theory is the, well, there are still uh, many variants of the basic emotion theory. But basically, studies using, for example, facial expression data uh, suggest around six to eight types of basic emotions, including happiness, anger, disgust, fear, surprise, sadness, and sometimes with a uh, neutral condition. And on the other hand, uh, uh, the circumplex model indicates that all emotions can be represented by linear combination of two uh, representative axes or combination, uh, linear combination of uh, two independent dimensions like valence or arousal or core effect. And valence is the uh, axis going along and present to present directions or otherwise negative or positive direction. And uh, arousal is the axis, uh, axis differentiating activated state and the deactivated state. So uh, in the conventional psychological study, these relatively smaller number of emotions or effects have been the main target of the, uh, of the many emotional study. Okay. 
And indeed, uh, in line with these theory, conventional theories, uh, neuroscience studies have also attempted to find a neural correlate of this basic emotion or co-affect uh, using neural, neural, for example, fMRI imaging technique. And one study uh, performed classification-based recording analysis on fMRI signals, uh, which were corrected while subjects have these basic emotions, in this case, content, amusement, surprise, fear, and sad, and neutral condition. And uh, they analyzed, they first uh, trained the models to classify the brain state between these different emotion, emotion condition, and then they analyzed the weights of the decoders run by uh, two localized brain regions, uh, which are corresponding to individual emotional states. And other studies use the representation simulator analysis, which is also a kind of multivariate voxel pattern analysis. Uh, and they use the technique to find brain areas that represent the various informations, positive or negative information, commonly across different stimulus modalities, in this case, for vision and uh, gustatory stimuli. And uh, they found that while some visual, high level visual areas are specifically uh, encoding uh, encoding the emotional con information about the visual stimuli, but they found the orbitofrontal context uh, represent the variance information irrespective of both, uh, irrespective of the difference between the stimulus modalities and those regions are representing uh, positive or negative information for both visual and gustatory stimuli. And uh, in contrast to this uh, my emotion study, uh, which investigated relatively smaller number of emotion, uh, emotion categories or affective dimensions. A recent psychological study performed a large scale human behavior experiment using a crowdsourcing, uh, crowdsourcing service and proposed a new theory, uh, high dimensional emotion space theory. And this is, um, so first, uh, they corrected a large number of uh, about 2,000. 200 video clips through the class experiment first. And this is an example video. So you may feel some uh, amusement like a uh, feeling from these videos. And uh, so, so using this kind of video corrected from the web, uh, Koi and Kirtona asked the human subject, again, using crowdsourcing experiment, ask human subjects to annotate uh, those videos using a uh, total of 34 emotion categories and 40 affective dimensions, like uh, shown in this left top, uh, left bottom uh, figure. So this, uh, the emotion categories include various emotions, like uh, including basic emotion, uh, basic emotion categories, like anger, fear, sadness, and, uh, and uh, also uh, there are many more nuanced emotion categories like anxiety, overjoy, and so on. And uh, affective dimension was also covering a large uh, uh, variance of the affective dimensions. And that consists of 14 uh, affective dimensions. And uh, that include uh, arousal and uh, variance and uh, dominance, which is uh, representative dimensions in the co-affect theory. <clears throat> and for emotion categories, there are a small difference for the collection of these two scores. And uh, the emotion categories, for emotion categories, they ask the subjects to vote whether the present video induced the emotion, even induced that kind of emotions or not. So basically, this was uh, consisted of uh, zero one responses, but from multiple Latest, they are based the scores to be some continuous values between 0 to 1. And uh, scores for affective dimensions were corrected in nine scale Ricardo scale, uh, nine level Ricardo scaling. So the score ranges from 1 to 9. And uh, so they used mean scores obtained from multiple raters, and uh, they used those scores to perform a dimensionality reduction analysis to find. Uh, to visualize the map of the emotional experiences uh, found in their behavior experience experiment. And uh, this right panel indicates a uh, uh, two-dimensional uh, emotional experience map obtained from these scores. 
and each uh, individual points uh, corresponding to specific videos. And uh, so here, they performed the PCA and the Disney uh, individual ID detection method. And so with some, uh, also they used machine learning based analysis to find 27 dominant uh, emotion dimensions, uh, which are visualized in this uh, panel. And uh, so, well, so you can see some clusters for nostalgia, cra uh, craving, and romance and uh, sexual desires, like uh, indicated by basic emotional theory, but they also found some more vague or continuous, uh, continuously connected clusters around these emotions, <clears throat> which is gradually changing the characteristics from disgust, horror, uh, disgust to horror to fear to anxiety. Uh, this kind of observation cannot be explained by uh, both of the uh, emotion category, basic emotion theory and the perfect dimension. And uh, so uh, the so anyway, so using so based on inspired by this psychological study, uh, we sought to understand the neural underpinnings of that kind of high dimensional emotional space uh, for diverse types of emotional experiences using the same set of visual stimuli used in the previous study. And uh, so we used and uh, corrective fMRI responses from a human subject, and uh, uh, which were corrected while subjects watched the same 2000, um, about 2,200 emotional videos, and then analyzed those measured fMRI responses using data-driven approach, including neural decoding, observer encoding, and unsupervised modeling technologies. And uh, so we investigate uh, neural representations for that diverse types of emotion categories. And uh, also, uh, as well as the 14 or uh, large types of affective dimensions uh, with which the videos were previously annotated by a wide, wide, uh, wide range of raters. Okay. Uh, quick question. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So uh, the emotion videos were rated by crowd workers, and then uh, you are looking at the brain of the completely separate person, right? Yes. So, um, and the persons that you are looking at is, I guess, Japanese people. Well, not all. Some are from Korean. I see. Okay. And then the uh, yeah. crowd, crowd workers tend to be mostly like a uh, Caucasian, US or Europe? Uh, I think so, yeah. Not I from see. Asia, maybe. And then um, do, do you expect some particular type of the movies or general kind of uh, individual or cultural difference kind of uh, effects to also, you know, kick in in your analysis or interpretation? Uh, uh, I think while we have not found any a systematic difference between that um, uh, due to the cultural difference. Mm. But uh, we can expect there would be difference because the video stimuli includes some of the uh, sometimes no, mm, the, some videos uh, need to know some historical my history of that company. Like, uh, for example, mm, the, um, for example, there are several videos uh, showing some politicians. So maybe uh, that are more relevant to those, for example, US people than our Japanese or Korean subject. So maybe some more strong emotions, uh, which were actually reflected in the corrected scores might have some bias from the emotions uh, on our fMRI dataset. I see. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, so uh, so here, uh, to, uh, so to, so in this, uh, in our uh, emotional study, 
Uh, specifically, we asked uh, the following, well, mainly uh, we asked the following three questions. And the first three, uh, I will examine whether we, uh, I had examined we, whether we can decode rich and nuanced emotion information from the brain using a uh, decoding analysis. And second, uh, we investigate which of the emotion categories or affective dimensions better captures or explain neural responses to emotional video stimuli. Uh, sorry, I missed the point, but so in the previous psychological study, they demonstrate that the emotion categories, the scores of emotion categories better explain the uh, behavior responses of the reported, well, how to say, behavior responses than affective dimensions. So here in the second questions, we seek, we check whether that types of superiority of the emotion categories can be found on neural responses. That is the second question. And uh, finally, uh, I will check how do brain activity pattern associated with various emotional experiences dis distributed uh, using fMRI responses, not from the uh, behavioral scores like this. So, uh, so and uh, by asking these three questions, uh, we were explore, uh, we had explored the uh, neural substrate for the high dimensional emotional space in the human brain. And uh, from here, uh, I will take you through our attempts to answer these questions. And the first, I will present several decoding analysis to examine the first question. Okay. And before going to the details of the analysis, uh, here are uh, the uh, details of our fMRI experiment. And in our experiment, uh, we presented a total of 2,119 uh, videos sequentially to the subject. And because the duration of each video clips are uh, different across video clips, uh, we, uh, and sometimes some videos have uh, were very short one. So we repeated the same video at least eight seconds to get uh, stable fMRI responses to the videos. And for longer videos than eight seconds, uh, we presented it only one time. And uh, each stimulus was, uh, each stimulus presentation period was followed by two to four second intertrial period. And subjects were freely viewing the stimulus videos without fixation. And we have collected fMRI data from a total of five subjects, one female and four males. And uh, et, oh, yeah, four, et, oh, only one male was from uh, was Korean, and one female and three males, a uh, Japanese subject. And we are so because there are several fMRI volumes during this stimulus presentation for each video clip. FMR volumes during each video presentation period was averaged to construct a sample for a video. So we have a, about we have about a 2,200 samples that corresponds to each video clips and use the FMR data samples to analyze to or to find some statistical relations between the video evaluation scores obtained in the previous psychological study. Uh, just a quick question. And, yeah. uh, that was the order of the video uh, same for all the subjects or completely uh, scrambled? Same for all subjects. I see. And uh, what, was it similar for the psychological study as well? Or in the psychology study, was the uh, order scrambled? Uh, actually, in the psychological study, uh, they asked, uh, so they split the whole video set to many version of the uh, set. Mm -hmm. So for each participant in the psychological study, uh, one sub, uh, one, how to say, one participant in one set of trials, the subjects only evaluated 10 or 20 videos in a single, how to say, set of trials. So that are totally different from our experiment condition. And the uh, order is also completely different then? Yeah, completely different. Okay. Okay. So in the first analysis, uh, we use a neural decoding to examine whether the emotions associated with those presented videos can be predicted from brain activity patterns within specific brain regions across the whole brain. And uh, 
for this analysis, we constructed the coding models from uh, for each emotion scores like surprise, uh, as shown here, uh, using multi voxel patterns in a specific brain areas as input to the decoder. So because we have no prior knowledge about where in the brain uh, individual emotions are encoded, we separate two train decoders for each of the individual emotions uh, using activity patterns in all of the of, of the uh, or a total of 306 brain regions on the cortex and as well as the 10 additional subcortical brain regions then a total number of decoders for specific emotional scores consisted of uh, uh, 317 uh, predictions predi uh, predictions okay and uh, so we used the uh, L2 regularized linear regression, simple linear regression algorithm, and uh, used a six fold cross validation uh, procedure was used to perform to evaluate prediction, uh, prediction accuracy for this decoding analysis. Okay, so for uh, this procedure, is a total of uh, 30, um, 317 prediction accuracy for specific uh, emotion. And uh, in addition to these uh, predictions from individual brain areas, uh, we also constructed an ensemble decoders uh, to aggregate information from multiple brain regions. And here, uh, we constructed that ensemble decoders by averaging outputs of decoders uh, that are trained for trained from multiple ROIs used in this analysis. Uh, just another quick question. So uh, six-fold cross-validation because of the, uh, you, you did the uh, outsource uh, sample subject level prediction, right? Uh, out of sample subject? I mean, uh, the, you had a six, no, five subject. Yeah, so I performed, so we performed uh this kind of analysis for each individual subject oh. and uh support is just because we collected uh we collected a whole data set uh, in a total of 61 uh, runs so we roughly separate that 61 run data into five uh six four Ah, okay, okay. So even though each video was presented only once, uh, because you can categorize the emotion uh, 34 ways or uh, something like that, uh, you can do this. Uh, uh, no, 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 actually, well, maybe I need to explain more about the scores. So actually here, uh, each video was not uh, categorized into specific uh, emotion category, mm. uh, but here the uh, single video clip was evaluated as a vector of scores. So individual participant in this psychological experiment annotated whether they feel whether that emotions are relevant to that videos. So sometimes subject scores one for some emotional scores. Uh, for example, they annotated labels like one 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 zero. And in that case, uh, so by doing this, uh, the uh, resultant scores annotated to the video is a kind of vector for individual video clips. Mm. And uh, our fMRI decoding analysis was doing uh, not uh, the classification decoding, but the regression analysis to predict that continuous scores for each emotion categories. And the uh, prediction accuracy was evaluated by the correlations between the predicted scores and the uh, uh, annotated uh, scores averaged across multiple subjects. Ah, okay, okay. I see. Uh, there was a question. Yeah. So it's like... Uh, to... No, 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 mm, to, to, to the power of 34. Uh, no, actually, so, mm, how to say? The, uh, yeah, number of categories, uh, mm, how to say? Number of score types for 
uh, or score types or scores for emotion categories consisted of the number of samples and 34 emotion categories. So not to do the power of 34, just the uh, mean scores of the 34, sorry, 34 emotion categories. So here, well, so in this figure, each, for example, MB category, uh, there are, uh, eight, so in this small distribution, there are 2,200 PDRs, each uh, annotated by some continuous, by continuous values that are uh, calculated by averaging multiple related scores that are originally 0, 1. So be, because uh, they took the average across many subjects, uh, one movie's uh, score for fear uh, MB could be somewhere between zero and one. Yes. So it's not like a zero or one, um, continue, uh, zero or one binary, which you try to regress, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What you try to regress was that this uh, 34 dimensional vectors pattern par video. Yes. Okay, You're great. Right. I, I understand it, but the Jun, did you understand? Fine. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, please let me know if you have any questions for your understanding. And uh, well, yeah, so here are the results of our decoding analysis and uh, the scores or prediction accuracy for the 34 emotion categories are shown in the top panel and the 40 and the scores are not on the prediction accuracy for 40 affected dangers are shown in the left bottom panel. And uh, so for each uh, for each emotion types, uh, there's a distributions that consist of the prediction accuracy from multiple brain areas, as well as the uh, ensemble decoder that you try the whole brain activity information. And uh, so here, the each colored dot uh, shows the correspondence between uh, each dot and uh, brain areas. So the reddish dot are the results from uh, anterior part of the prefrontal brain areas and the bluish or greenish uh, dots corresponding to the brain areas around well, uh, the occipital or temporal parietal regions. And uh, as you can see, first, uh, we can find that the most of the emotion categories and the affective dimensions can be accurately predicted from brain activity in multiple brain areas. Ah, and uh, sorry, and these gray lesions are uh, uh, indicating that this brain area did not show a significant, significantly accurate prediction accuracy. So only the significant results are colored by based on this uh, mapping uh, color schemes. And uh, so here, uh, oh, sorry, so each dot correspond to decoders for individual ROI and uh, this square is corresponding to ensemble decoder. And the uh, results are averaged across five subjects. And uh, so firstly, uh, we can find that we can find that scores of most emotion categories and affective media engines were accurately predicted from brain activity patterns in multiple brain lesions, and uh, some of which were better predicted from anterior part of the brain like this. Uh, on the other hand, some other categories like nostalgia were better predicted from more a uh, parietal or occipital region of the brain. And uh, so the <coughs> comparison between these ensemble decoding accuracy and individual uh, brain areas suggests that the AMA showed first showed that the ensemble decoders showed uh, higher or improved performance than those obtained from individual brain areas, indicating that the emotional information was not represented in the focal small brain regions, but the combination nor the information from multiple brain regions can uh, contribute to enhance the accuracy or prediction accuracy of the decoding analysis which is partly supporting the uh, supporting the claim that the emotions are represented in multiple brain regions. And uh, so 
to investigate which brain regions. Uh, be uh, before before going down, uh, just a, another question, or maybe if you are going to discuss that later, that's also fine to skip. But uh, for for each of the uh, category or affective dimensions, for example, mm -hmm. arousal and dominance. Mm -hmm. Arousal. They they are okay. usually kind of prominent in uh, psychological theory, right? Yeah, you're right. And uh, the fact that the uh, correlation coefficient is lowest for these uh, seem quite interesting. Uh, do, do you have some explanation for this? Mm, actually, so that might be, uh, but that might be relevant to that uh, your previous comments about the cultural difference between the uh, those fMRI subjects and uh, readers who annotate these videos. Because the, for example, dominance, so high dominance, high dominant scores are often uh, provided to some um, to scenes from walls or gun visuals. So, ma well, Asian or Japanese people may not feel uh, strong but dominant feelings from those. Uh, how to say? Mm, so because yeah, our Japanese people live in very, um, uh, how to say, more far from that kind of war or human like mm. society. Mm. So that there might be difference for between the feelings of the scores and emotional responses in fMRI data. Mm. I see. So that, that could be partly cultural or difference between the viewer and also fMRI subjects. And the, the yeah. other issue was that, uh, especially for the 34 categories, uh, is there a correlation between the sort of clusters of the emotion category that are, that are far from others? tend to be easier mm -hmm. to decode and then uh, those categories that are clustered together with uh, many things are more difficult to decode like let's say i don't know um, uh, guilt and contempt and envy pride are, are these close to some other categories whereas the sexual desire aesthetic appear appreciation enter entrancement discuss are uh, kind of distinct mm -hmm. okay. clusters uh actually so because this analysis was not uh, done by classification. Uh, we just performed the prediction or regression analysis for individual scores. Mm. The decoding accuracy did not reflect the, uh, how to say, did not reflect the uh, discriminability between emotions. But we can see uh, whether the score similarity are reflected in the uh, in this decoding accuracy by checking the similarity in the uh, best predictable brain regions mm. that are found from this uh, to say, distribution of brain areas, and uh, that are partly relevant to my uh, to later topic in this analysis. Ah, I see. But okay. not uh, check the details of which and which emotion and which emotions are uh, difficult to be dissociated. I see. Okay, thank you. I have one late question. Hmm? So so I, I believe you read your paper yesterday and I noticed that you had a hemodynamic delay collected for four seconds. And I, I wonder some of the emotions or dimension, dimensions that were inferior in the, these performance were due to this temporal dynamic difference. So mm -hmm. some, for example, arousal, maybe quicker response, for example. Ha have you tried shifting some temporal? Uh, actually, no, but that is, yeah, that is possible, I think, because, yeah, as you said, some types of emotions are very, how to say, well, some types of emotions are uh, registered in a very short timing mm -hmm. and did not wrong uh, for uh, not for all the mm -hmm. stimulus presentation period for that videos. So mm -hmm. by averaging fMRI volume during a single video clips, mm -hmm. that may affect the uh, how to say, mass signal to noise ratio about 
that emotion information. So yeah, that might be partly mm -hmm. explaining the uh, performance difference across emotion categories and dimensions, I think. I see. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your comment. Oh, so uh, is, is there known evidence that the brain uh, blood flow gets affected by some kind of emotional response? Or am I misunderstanding? Like, you know, regardless of, uh, on, to, uh, on top of the uh, neural activity overcompensation of this you know, bold signal. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I know that, you know, some of the emotion does elicit different uh, kind of uh, blood circulation patterns. Uh, probably across the body, but uh, I don't know about the brain. Is there some kind of uh, a, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, but well, mm, so it, it, what we have uh, discussed now is not uh, about how, uh, so how to say, it's not about the dynamic difference, not the hemodynamic responses, but some emotions can be, how to say, uh, so my experienced in a very fresh time period. Ah, within the video. Uh, I see. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Yes. I and uh, all right. I understand that now. Yeah, actually, uh, I previously thought that it might be good, better to annotate or to how to say localize the time point of the in within the videos mm. that elicit exact that emotions. To, mm. ex to improve the, uh, how to say, to improve the uh, majority of the labels. Mm. Because currently, for different or varying uh, durations of videos, the labels are annotated as a whole period of that videos. Mm. Uh, that uh, the current score information doesn't indicate which timing the emotions are uh, elicited. So by annotating the timing information and picking up the fMRI volumes uh, during that timing, it might be, uh, the result might be better, I think. I see. Okay. Uh, is there any question or comment? Okay. Okay. Well, so here, uh, yeah, we visualize the decoding accuracy map averaged across all the five subjects. And uh, so, yeah, uh, as we show this uh, accuracy map on our paper, so you can enjoy explanatory how individual brain areas are relevant to the information of individual types of emotions. And uh, uh, in general, you can see that the brain regions showing high accuracy for specific emotions were not focal but rather distributed across multiple regions, including visual, parietal, and frontal regions like this. And uh, so it, well, when we closely inspect the uh, decoding accuracy map for several examples, uh, interestingly, uh, even subjectively related emotions like fear and horror, and also uh, like confusion and awkwardness, uh, decoded with high accuracy from different configuration of brain areas like this. So while there is uh, some overlap between the well predicting brain lesions like these uh, parietal areas, so these brain lesions are showing better, dec uh, better decoding accuracy for most of the emotion category, but the configuration of other brain regions are totally different, even between these very similar, subjectively similar and relevant emotion category. So these results are supporting the nuanced taxonomy of emotions. And uh, yeah, the results indicate the feasibility and the importance for modeling the uh, neural responses associated with uh, our emotional experiences for rich and emotional emotion, uh, rich and uh, nuanced emotion categories. Okay, that's sorry. And uh, so this is relevant to the yeah, some questions. And then so here, uh, to examine the extent to which the configuration of brain regions informative for decoding analysis were unique to each emotion and how, and also uh, we want to uh, evaluate how these emotion accuracy maps are consistent across subjects. 
So we next uh, tested whether this whether the emotion categories and affective dimensions can be identified across subjects based on this region-wise accuracy map, uh, accuracy map patterns of individual emotions estimated for individual subjects. So a region-wise accuracy pattern for Y emotions from one subject are shown right here, and uh, the other subjects results are right here. And uh, we performed identification analysis by comparing the comparing these accuracy patterns between the same oh, sorry yeah between the same emotion categories and the other emotion categories to see whether the correlation between the same emotion categories are higher than the other combination of uh, emotion categories and uh, this is the results uh, evaluated with a varying number of candidates for this identification analysis and uh, you can see that the uh, so uh, these are the mean identification accuracy averaged across all pairs of subjects that would be uh, 20 from five subjects and uh, so mean average uh, mean identification accuracy averaged across all of these pairs uh, exceeding chance levels and uh, for all candidate uh, for all number of candidate set size and these results suggest that the distinct emotions associated with the video stimuli were differently represented across the brain in a consistent manner across individuals. So these are the results for the first question. And uh, so our decoding analysis revealed that a scores no individual emotions uh, for both uh, the emotion category and affective dependence were accurately decoded, except for some uh, small number of emotion categories and dependence from multiple brain lesions. And the uh, configuration of those multiple brain lesions that shows high decoding accuracies are uh, uh, sometimes overlap but uh, differed across emotions. Okay, so the so next I'll talk about the second point, uh, which of the emotion categories or affective inventions better explain or captures neural responses to emotional video stimuli using voxel-wise encoding analysis. And uh, so here, the uh, main procedure of the encoding uh, encoding analysis was almost the same with the decoding analysis, but the direction was opposite. And uh, so here, the encoding model was constructed from the pattern of emotion squares, uh, separated for categories and dimensions and uh, using L2 regularized linear regressions to predict fMRI uh, response time course for individual voxels. So in this case, the encoding prediction accuracy are uh, uh, obtained for individual uh, voxels for each of the category, for each set of emotion categories or affected dimensions. Okay, and uh, this is the uh, two encoding accuracy map for one subject and the left panel shows a encoding accuracy map for emotion category and the right panel shows a encoding accuracy for affective dimension a set of affective dimensions and uh, the yellowish regions are indicating that boxes are better predicted and uh, so red or these gray regions are showing the performance was not high and you can see that the performance, um, first we found uh, both of the emotion category and affective engine uh, can be used to predict brain activity in many brain lesions, indicating that a uh, broad array of brain lesions are uh, involved in encoding information, in encoding information relevant to emotion or affective dimension, uh, categories or affective dimensions. But so here, uh, to directly compare the deco uh, encoding, um, how to say, uh, the perform encoding performance between these two set of uh, emotion types. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so we directly compare the encoding performance for each voxels between the uh, a category, a, between the results obtained from emotion categories and affective dimension. So here each dot indicate the prediction accuracy for each box cells. And uh, this 
、えー、とレッドラインズインディケートダーベストリニアフィットフォーディスディスティリビューションエンディインディスケースダーディスえっ、ー、とオリエンテーションなかったですねまあディスえっ、ー、とフィットラインズアーバイアスタワードカテゴリーディメンションズフロムザパリピーダフォーティファイブディグリーソインディケーティングダーダーオンナブレージダーエンコーディングパフォーマンスはベタフロー From emotion categories and dimensions. And、uh, when we directly compare the distribution of the encoding accuracy obtained from all the voxels on the whole cortical regions, and you, we can see that consistently across five subjects, the、uh, encoding performance from emotion categories were better than the dimensions. And also,、uh, to find, to explore any specific brain areas that might be better encoding. Information of affective dimensions. We also calculated these、uh, slope angles using a set of,、uh, set of voxels that are within individual brain areas annotated by this、uh, color map. So for, for each dot in this panel, indicate the, indicate the、uh, slope angles. Obtained from the voxel distribution, accuracy distributions within the specific brain areas. And here, the vertical axis indicates the deviation from this parity 45 degree. And the, the bottom, so、uh, how to say, the, this,、uh, the scores on the lower side of this panel indicate that the categorical models better explain the brain responses than the dimensional、uh, dimen affective dimensions. And from five subjects and from the average result, the results show that the, in any of the brain regions,、uh, categorical models, categorical emotional models explain the larger variance of the brain responses. And、uh, so this is also uh, consistent. Uh, this is also consistently observed in the subcortical brain areas, which are often mentioned to be relevant to the affective dimensions. But in,、uh, within, uh, within these 10 types of subcortical brain areas, including hippocampus, o s a l a m u s and、uh, cerebellum, the old brain areas show e s superior performance for categorical models. Consistently across most subjects. So, here, each dot corresponding to the performance for individual subjects. Okay, so, so these results suggest that、uh, categorical models reliably outperform the dimensional model, providing the neural evidence for the superiority of the categorical models also in the neural responses to the videos.、Uh, again,、uh, just a quick question about the subcortical areas.、Uh, the prediction accuracy are Really low compared to the cortical、yes. areas, right? Is、yes. that the kind of expected or surprising?、Uh, expected actually,、mm. so、because well, so actually, there are many voxels showing higher encoding accuracy individually, but averaging across all the voxels, the performance t e n d to be more appears to be low. That is the first point, and uh. Also, well, how to say, I forget. Ah, yeah, and、uh, yeah, so this is expected, actually.、Mm. Okay, because、uh, some of the emotion theory t e n d to kind of emphasize subcortical, you know, area structures yeah, for yeah, emotion, but、uh, maybe if it's consistent with your expectation, that's fine, probably. Yeah.、Mm. Okay, how can I go ahead? So, next, so given that our video stimuli consisted of、uh, various scenes and events that also included many visual objects and semantic features, like many types of animals or human behaviors,、uh, we next sought to disentangle the brain representation of emotion and those.、Uh, My confounding factors from visual object and、uh, semantic information. And for this analysis,、uh, we constructed two additional encoding models from outputs of、uh, pre trained、uh, deep neural network model for object recognition. And here we call this visual object features. 
So we used VCC19, uh, well, representative deep neural network model for visual object recognition to compute visual object features for specific video uh, frames, well, for specific videos. And uh, so here we used uh, all video frames as input to the models and averaged across all uh, feature patterns obtained from all frames for each video to construct a con uh, visual object feature for that video. And also we uh, further corrected uh, semantic labels uh, similarly to the emotion labels using some uh, total of 73 semantic categories like people, industries, automobiles, uh, aquatic animals, or, uh, and so on. And use these vectors to construct encoding models for uh, semantic representation. And this is the comparison between the uh, emotion category encoding model. So in this, in this case, emotion category model was used for comparison. And uh, these two results are showing the comparison between emotion categories versus visual object features on left side. And uh, on the right side, emotion categories versus semantic features as shown. And this small insert uh, indicate the uh, distribution of the encoding accuracy between these two types of models, either uh, for each of these two types of models. And uh, you can see that the encoding accuracy is highly correlated to these uh, three types of uh, emotion, oh, no, three types of uh, feature set, like emotion, visual object, and uh, semantic features. But uh, there's a, uh, differences of the distribution of highly uh, predictable brain lesions between these models. And uh, so here, the, so maybe the color scheme is a bit uh, difficult to understand, but here, uh, the brighter regions indicate uh, the voxels with brighter color indicate that the voxels were better predicted either of the two set of these two used model features. And uh, the color indicate which of the emotion or visual or semantic model better explain the activities. So if the voxels are colored by blue, that boxes were better predicted by visual or semantic features. And the boxes with reddish colors uh, indicating that boxes were better predicted emotional information. And uh, the results were reasonable. For example, here, the visual areas were uh, shown with blue color and the uh, more anterior part of the brains are uh, more reddish uh, in both two types of uh, comparison here. And uh, you can find that the comparison between these two types of visual objects and the semantic features clearly highlighted brain areas with uh, different feature preferences, like this IPL, inferior parietal review, and the uh, uh, no, precarious, uh, showing more uh, boxes within these two these areas are uh, showing a more relative uh, colors indicating that the voxels around here are uh, uh, preferential encoding emotional information than visual object features or semantic features. Do uh, you know what I mean? Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. It's uh, like a comment, but it, uh, it's a, a little surprising that semantic, like emotion is evokes more like prefrontal, not evoke, but like emotion is really with prefrontal areas more than semantic. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit unpredictable from my right. viewpoint. Mm -hmm. like, so, so could you remind me what, like the example of semantic again? Because uh, semantic is semantic about people, uh, mainly about uh, visual objects or seeing or actions. Mm -hmm. Are used for analyzing for semantic okay. features. And how did you get these uh, semantic labels? Is it uh, from uh, online participants or? Uh, these are from uh, the, yeah the same with the uh, emotion labels. The data itself are corrected by Koei and Kertona. That is for I heard 
the folder first their study, but they didn't use, so they shared the ah. novels with us. I see, I see. Okay. okay. And uh, so next to better understand which brain regions preferentially represent emotion. Uh, so while yeah, we can uh, find several blobs no brain areas that are preferentially encoding emotion information from this result, but they are distributed across brain areas and difficult to understand which brain areas are preferentially encoding emotions consistently. So here, to better understand which brain lesions preferentially represent emotions, uh, we utilize the concept of principal, gra principal gradient, uh, which is estimated from uh, the functional connectivity patterns and uh, describe global Araka gradient cortical organization. So this is not from our data, but we used the uh, labels provided from a study by Margulis, uh, where the individual boxes are annotated by the position, nor the gradient scores uh, defined by this principal gradient uh, a kind of model. And uh, this uh, previous study by Margulis used the dimensionality reduction technique uh, to explore principal component of variances of um, in cortical connectivity patterns and found that the first dimension of that principal component, they call gradient, uh, explain the difference between unimodal to transmodal brain regions like this. So here, the blue or greenish uh, regions are corresponding to uh, uh, corresponding to more area sensory cortical regions like vision and auditory. And uh, the other end of this gradient corresponding to the uh, more high level uh, cortical areas around default mode network. And the second gradient or second component of that uh, principal component analysis are uh, differentiating the different are uh, differentiating the regions between visual colored by blue and uh, uh, to auditory and somat uh, auditory and uh, somat motor areas uh, colored by green like this. Okay, so here, so we used this uh, principal the concept of principal gradient to uh, how to say to. Yeah, and that's to explain the brain areas uh, that are distributed across the cortex in our data. So here is a comparison between the score map of the grad, uh, principal gradient for one and two, and the best model map obtained from our encoding analysis. Here, the, it, the color of individual boxes are defined by the best predictable models for that model. So here, the visual areas are uh, best predicted by visual object features and more anterior regions around parietal and temporal regions are better predi best predicted by semantic features and other regions colored by red is was best predicted by emotion scores. So, and, uh, so using these uh, results, we projected the voxel positions into the a principal gradient space that spanned by these two gradient one and gradient two axis for uh, each for voxels best predicted by visual object semantic and emotions and compare the distributional differences within this principal gradient space <clears throat> and uh, the results clearly show the position uh, distribution difference of the positions of the voxels between these two, these three conditions and uh, visual object features, uh, the voxels best predicted by visual object features are uh, distributed around here, located in the low scores for gradient one axis and the uh, center of the distributions are gradually shifted for semantic features uh, that are localized around the center position of this gradient axis and then the emotion, the best uh, voxels, best predicted by emotion scores are uh, the position of that voxel groups are further shifted toward the higher uh, the voxels with 
high scores for this gradient first axis. So indicating that the ma, showing some ma, gradual shift of the position within this uh, fringe gradient space. And uh, so these results suggest that the, although the emotion related representation uh, or emotion related representation appears to be broadly distributed across the whole cortex around transmodal brain lesions, uh, they are centered in lesions uh, that lie on the far end of the hierarchical uh, gradient. So we can uh, interpret that uh, while uh, we can interpret that uh, brain areas better predicted or better explained by emotional levels are uh, uh, localized in the high level uh, processing stages in the uh, global hierarchical a global hierarchy on the human brain. Okay, that is reasonable because we need to uh, we need to extract abstract uh, we need to extract more and more high level visual uh, high level information from the visual input, and some abstractions are needed to uh, interpret or understand or experience emotional informations from the uh, visual input. So the results are reasonable, I think. So oh. here, oh, okay. So lately, some debates that this uh, like subjective, like conscious writing comes from uh, higher areas, whereas mm -hmm. more uh, like physical physiological reactions come from lower areas like amygdala and so forth. And there, so. Like did, did any of your like data in, even when you trace back to the dimension of balance um, and arousal, did you find some uh like deviations, deviated labels of categories or balance that that are uh, apart from the prefrontal areas, even in the domain of emotion? Mm, sorry, could you repeat? So, so, so I wonder because you know I'm sure like like explicit categorizations of emotions probably come from higher areas, and that's what that's that converge mm -hmm. with other uh, uh, literature too. But I also think that some uh, more uh, implicit uh, emotional reactions probably come from other areas. Mm -hmm including our subcortical errors and so forth. And I, mm -hmm. I wondered if you saw some specific patterns like like arousal. Uh, I, I know this is emotional categories, but some emotion might touch, might come from uh, much lower areas, whereas some categories come from higher areas. Like, did you see like some uh, systematic patterns? Uh, I understand your point, I think. Well, so you mean, well, uh, well, so oh, within the, so in, in our case, 34 emotion categories or 14 affective dimension, there might be some systematic variances or differences, not the uh, uh, difference between, well, within those emotion categories and sometimes some affective dimensions may be more uh, while they are uh, lower kind of lower brain areas uh, that might be relevant to emotion so you may think that uh, though, well such brain areas while they are lower brain areas uh, they so whether my analysis did show uh, such, how to say, uh, how can I say, well, uh, so there are, so okay, let me <laughs> rephrase again. Well, so while there are several brain areas like subcortical regions are known to be relevant to emotions or affective dimensions, and uh, they are lower brain areas than the higher brain areas uh, mentioned here. So your question is whether my analysis shows some uh, correspondence between 
those uh, low level so whether my analysis shows some evidence that the lower brain areas around the subcortical areas are relevant to the emotion information or something yeah maybe like some systematic relationship like so so uh, you know i i'm i i see gradient mm -hmm. of different emotion categories uh some related more to prefrontal and the other more distributed and i didn't yeah. know it is so some like a systematic uh relationship even just an example of some emotions that were less related with prefrontal mm -hmm. uh yeah okay so here actually well so in this analysis we used a set of so uh, the encoding model was constructed based on a set of emotion category features so it is difficult to differently mm -hmm. or to differ dissociate the effect of individual uh dissociate the uh, contribution from individual emotion categories are affected dimensions separately in this analysis so mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, we didn't perform such analysis, but uh, we may be able to find uh, find some differences of the contribution from different emotion categories or affective dimensions by splitting the data into mm. a set of different emotion categories or dimensions yes. and compare the mm. results between those set of models, I think. Mm. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, here things are, are, are cutting, but uh, let's, uh, if it's okay, we let's listen to Dr. Hirakawa for another five, ten minutes, and then we switch to question time, if that's okay. Mm, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, can I go ahead? Please. Okay, okay so as for the second question, uh, uh, so we investigate with uh, which of the emotion categories and affective dimensions better present, ex explain neural responses to emotional video stimuli. And uh, the answer is that the uh, categorical emotion model or categorical emotions better predicted or explain brain activity than the dimensional models that are consistent with the uh, consistent to the uh, previous psychological finding. And the uh, results showed that the Specifically, the categorical emotion models were effective to predict activities around transmodal brain lesions that write on the far edge of the uh, principal gradient or the global hierarchy in the brain. Okay, and uh, finally, uh, so how to? Uh, okay, so I uh, asked this question: How do brain activity patterns associated various emotional experiences? distribute uh, using unsupervised uh, modeling method. And uh, so firstly, uh, we conducted, we first checked the uh, distribution of differences qualitatively by using UMAP. This is uh, this is also a kind of dependency reduction or visualization technique that uh, compressed uh, originally 34, I don't know, uh, that compressed a huge number of voxel activity patterns into two dimensions here. So here we use that UMAP and uh, applied it on voxel activity patterns obtained from those uh, emotion video presentation experiment. And uh, we only use the voxels that are better explained by emotion encoding models to see distribution of brain activity here. And uh, the, these three maps are uh, so here, so importantly, in this analysis, we did not use any label or emotion data, I don't know, emotion label information for uh, obtaining this accuracy map. We just used the uh, uh, voxel activity patterns to be uh, compressed into these two dimensional uh, maps. But in these three maps, we, after obtaining this two dimensional, two dimensional map, we colored individual uh, dot uh, that are corresponding to uh, the brain responses to specific videos using different color coding and uh, on left uh, panels we used uh, we colored individual data point by 27 category emotion category scores 
uh, that are reported in the previous psychological study. And in these two, uh, two distribution map, uh, we used three uh, representative affective dimensions for coloring the individual data point using valence, arousal, and dominance. And the results are averaged across five subjects. And uh, from this result, you can find that the data distributions obtained from voxel activity patterns shows some clusters that are relevant to, specifically relevant to specific emotion categories like disgust, romance, sexual desire, and fear, nostalgia, and uh, aesthetic appreciation here. But uh, when we call out this data point by the scores of affective dimensions, the colors are not uh, localized to a specific to a specific data space around here. So reddish data are uh, observed around here, here, and here, and also here. Ah, uh, so sorry. So here I used uh, the positive part and the negative part of the affective dimension separately for doing this analysis because uh, the uh, the data collection strategy was a bit different between emotion category and affective dimension. And anyway, so here, the any of the valence arrows around dominance did not clearly show large clusters, specific clusters on this data point. So qualitatively, we can find that the data, uh, how to say, membrane response patterns are distributed mm -hmm. uh, in accordance with the organization of emotion categories. And to quantitatively evaluate this uh, tendency, uh, we also performed a uh, k-means clustering analysis on fMRI voxel uh, response patterns, and uh, so we set the number of emotion uh, number of uh, clusters to be twenty-seven. Uh, we first estimated the uh, how to say the cluster point uh, from the data set, and then uh, check if uh, and then assign the data samples that have high scores for individual emotions. Uh, how to say, sorry, well, so so after estimating the, um, the clusters using k-means clustering, we assign individual data point, uh, in this case, individual brain responses to videos to the uh, clusters using the cluster method and then check whether that data point that have high scores for specific emotions are uh, distributed across these clusters or focally uh, assigned to specific clusters. And uh, so here are the 27 categories and uh, uh, 14 affective dimensions for positive and negative side. But you can see that for emotion categories, the data samples with high emotions, uh, with high scores, are uh, specifically assigned to specific uh, clusters, unsupervisory uh, estimated for the brain activity. But that degree, that extent was less uh, obvious for dimension scores. And this right bottom figure shows the uh, entropy of this distribution, showing that for emotion category, uh, for brain responses to, how to say, for my uh, high, uh, for emotion categories, the uh, brain responses elicited by, how to say, my brain responses strongly associated with specific emotion categories have high entropy and low entropy, indicating that the assignment of that boxes and of that data points are uh, specifically localized to specific brain clusters, indicating that uh, even with some non-supervised data analysis, the uh, superiority or mass uh, superiority of the emotion categories can be found, and the emotion-related femoral responses had a uh, cluster-like organization efficiently characterized by distinct emotion categories rather than the uh, affective dimensions. 
so to the far, uh, to the last questions, the how do brain activity patterns associated by various emotion experience distribute? Uh, the answer is was the patterns of brain activity distributed with clusters corresponding to specific emotion countries. So yeah, uh, taken together, so, uh, this is a summary of my talk. And uh, so the main objective of uh, our investigation was to find the neural substrate for the high dimension emotional space. And uh, using brain decoding analysis, we have demonstrated that the scores of the rich emotion categories were accurately predictive from brain activity patterns, even for nuanced emotion category. And the uh, results also showed that the distribution of brain regions effective for predicting scores are largely distributed across a uh, cortex. And sometimes the, so that, uh, that brain regions uh, overlap across different emotions, uh, but uh, the, their configurations are uh, systematically different across emotions and consistent across subjects. And uh, our third uh, encoding analysis uh, trained with the categorical emotion scores better predicted brain activities rather than the rather than encoding models trained with dimension scores. And uh, the prediction accuracy was specifically higher around the transmodal brain region for emotion scores, for emotion information. And uh, in the last analysis, uh, we can find that emotion related brain activity patterns have cluster like distributions that align to a greater degree with categories and with dimensions. And uh, in summary, uh, our results provide the neuroscientific support for the theory of the high dimensional emotion space. And the results eliminate the neural foundation distributed across transmodal brain regions. So these are the summary. And uh, finally, uh, I'll outline what future work we still have to do. And uh, so first point, so there are four topics. And the uh, first point is the representational commonalities of emotion across multiple stimulus modality, different multiple modality. So, well, I have shown several results supporting the high dimensional emotion theory. We have to keep in mind that the findings in the present study was only about the visually evoked emotions, especially uh, specifically listed by event like visual scenes. And uh, so, investigation about the representational commonalities of emotion across multiple stimulus modalities like, for example, music and prosody is an important direction of future research. And uh, actually, the Alan, Alan and Dakka, so the collaborators of these studies have already conducted a series of emotion, a uh, series of psychological study using other types of uh, stimuli, including uh, to facial expression, uh, to emotional responses to facial uh, expression images, music and uh, non-verbal human vocalization. And uh, they used those similar data sets for by collecting a huge number of human responses with diverse types of emotional stimuli. And uh, they also demonstrate that uh, emotional categories are uh, shows the superiority over the affective affective dimensions uh, supporting the effectiveness of the high dimensional emotional space models for explaining human responses. So we may be able to do similar analysis in this present study by collecting ephemeral responses to those stimulus sets to investigate how the findings in this study can be generalizable to other stimulus modality, which would help to enrich previous findings regarding the cross modal neural representation of emotion investigated with more uh, narrower ranges of emotion categories and stimuli. And uh, maybe this second point might be relevant to this project or Beto Gakujo Sengak project called this uh, Korea structure. And uh, to one limitation, so and uh, this is relevant to my, uh, the limitation of our study. So uh, one limitation of this, our uh, experiment was that the emotional ratings we used were averages from multiple letters and uh, not from the subjects of fMRI experiment. So 
Although our decoding and de de decoding and encoding models were able to establish systematic relations, statistical relationship between those ratings and brain responses, the reported feelings of those raters, correct, uh, those raters uh, in the previous psychological study may not completely match those of our fMRI subjects. So, depending on the extent that neural representation of emotion are subject to those individual differences in my differences in culture or demographic variables like gender and uh, age and personality, a future study may further clarify or uncover more robust neural representation of, by incorporating those variables. And uh, so another potential concern in our study is the confounding of first person and the third person emotion. So it is possible that the well, while it is possible that the neural representations, uh, ma, sorry, well, so it is possible that the neural representation uncovered here reflect information not only regarding first personal emotion experiences but also regarding predictions of how others might feel. For example, uh, sadness, um, for example, like the dominance we, uh, we mentioned in during the during this presentation, and uh, sadness may not directly experienced by the viewers of the videos. But sometimes, for example, uh, joy or surprise can be uh, elicited during the video viewing. But in our experiment and analysis, we did not differentiate the difference between first person and the third person emotions. So although the overlap, observed overlap may also indicate uh, common neural representation between first person and third person emotions, which experiment may need to dissociate the difference between these two. And uh, finally, uh, I'm also interested in building interesting this point, the computational models for studying emotion representation in the brain. So, uh, so how to say? So actually, uh, this is also relevant to the third topic, the difference between first person and third person. Because and uh, uh, recent advances in computer vision or computer science, especially with the deep learning technology, enables us to construct more and more accurate emotional recognition models. But such models or such successful recognition of emotion from visual or auditory input does not indicate that the model itself experienced that emotional feeling like humans. So while there is a trend to investigate neural representations associated with visual, auditory, and recently language uh, tasks using deep learning models trying to solve those tasks, uh, but doing similar research in the field of emotions need careful differentiation between the first person and the third person emotions to know what we can say. So how to say, well, to um, characterize what our feeling of the emotions uh, using these types of uh, investigation. Okay, so yeah, that's all for today's presentation and thank you for your listening. Thank you so much. So let's have uh, 10 minutes of question time. That was thank great. You. Thank you. Any question from audience? Oh, if not, I have one question. So, yeah. so it, I, I've been always skeptical about the, the quality of dimensional levels. So mm -hmm. I, I feel that 14 levels that have been used in the field are not really familiar to our everyday experience. And I wonder if you try to extract and develop your own dimensions based on your uh, data. Uh, actually, we haven't, but actually, yeah, we uh, agree on the, agreeing on the so we need to be careful about the quality of this data because, as you said, uh, some of the dimensions are not, but well, sometimes maybe uh, not so, how to say, intuitive for letters, uh, I think. Uh, but uh, so because, so to confirm that point, uh, so for example, one possibility that can bias our finding is that 
the data quality of those uh, affectively mentioned scoring and uh, emotion category scoring can uh, be largely different between mm -hmm. those two levels. Mm -hmm. So uh, we check how the individual responses. So while the scores we used in our analysis was the averaged one, but because we have also access to the original 0-1 responses or mm -hmm. original five, uh, 1 to 9 scores from individual participants, we evaluated the vari variations or we evaluated the variances across individuals from mm -hmm. uh, to my individual participants. But we didn't find any you know, large vari larger variances mm -hmm. from affective dimensions. So mm -hmm. we cannot uh, find any, uh, so how to say, Okay, uh, for, uh, strong for bias due to the yeah, difficulty for labeling the affective dimensions, at least more within our attempts to resolve that point. I see. Thank you. I have a Maria? Yeah, just a small question regarding the method. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's a little harder. Can, can you speak up? No? No? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. Um, did you say, maybe I'm wrong, but did you say that the order of the clips was uh, the same between subjects? I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. Can you like again? The, or, the order of the clips uh, of the emotions, let's say, was the same across subjects? Well, the order of the video clips. Wow. Of the video clips, yeah. Order. Yeah. Order. Uh, the order was, was, the was, was the same. And why this? I mean, can, can you explain me why? Because I, I like you. I imagine I have no experience with it, but you kind of develop some cumulative, uh, probably context of the emotions, and probably you would expect a different. Uh, so you expect you would have the same uh, decoding of that of those uh, emotions if you would use a. Uh, different order. So I, my, my question basically is why did you decide to use the the same order of, of these emotions on the on these movies? Uh, so firstly, yeah, uh, the order was the same across subjects and uh, but uh, so after this study, when we performed the similar experiment using, for example, in the current uh, MRI setting uh, with different subjects, relevant to this project, uh, we confirmed that uh, different, uh, but changing the order of the stimulus did not affect the uh, decoding and encoding results obtained in this analysis. But okay. uh, the reason why we used the uh, same order for, same, uh, uh, the reason why we used the same order for uh, collecting the data from this subject in this project is uh, primarily because we want to use this data set for also for as a task or, or as a project. And uh, in that project, we it is required to uh, be aligned, the order need to be aligned across subject. So that is not relevant to this project, but we confirmed afterwards that uh, the decision did not change the conclusions from this study. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a comment from Angus yes. in the comment section. Mm -hmm. Do you envision to get us closer towards fast parcel models? Uh, okay, thank you for your question. So as for my differentiate distinguishing fast and sad pass, my third uh, emotions, well, actually, well, so I need to come up with some better idea, but currently we can, so while, so one way to differentiate those rubbers, uh, just ask subject if the feeling you annotate is from your own experiences or the, your guess or your, how to say, your observation about that person in the videos. So, for example, uh, by, my, that might be relevant to the uh, second topic in that discussion about the individual difference of the uh, emotions or the individual differences of emotional experiences. 
but eventually we may need to collect the labels for individual indi individual subjects to know the difference across subject but if we ask subjects to uh, annotate their emotional feeling we can also add a differentiation between whether that emotion you annotated was from, from or from your own feelings or your guess from for that person so that analysis or that differentiation can be experimentally first i think and uh there might be another way to differentiate those dif differentiate those two types of emotions by analytically but i have not have clear uh, method for that currently Ah, does it make sense? Ah, okay, thank you. Okay, anything else? Okay, so I think that can close the talk by Dr. Horikawa. And thank you so much for a comprehensive work. Yeah, thank you for your invitation. Okay. And if you can stay, um, and now, yeah. you thank you very much. And I'll just uh, quit the uh, end uh, YouTube stream right now. Bye, YouTube okay. viewers. Uh, okay. <sighs> now it's end. <laughs>